So it's a new year, and with new years comes new rules. Cams has updated the rules for the XL series. One of the major changes is that we now all have to run a FIA approved rain light, which is gonna be the same for all race cars in Australia. So in this episode, we're gonna make this little guy fit on that little guy. So what's the deal with the rain light? Basically what the rain light does is it's an FIA approved high intensity red LED, fits on the back of the car in the middle and when you're in the mist and the spray of a race, you're gonna be able to see the cars in front of you through the spray. Obviously, especially if you're running a faster car than other people on the track, you're gonna come up on them quick. This will show you where they are. So it's a bit of a safety thing, works pretty cool. So this rain light is supplied by Lux. I'm now working with Lux to develop this. Um, these guy, uh, Lux brought these guys in from England. They're a really cool light, and as I said, FIA approved. Um, they're on a funky angle, as you can see, and the reason for that is so they can be mounted on the back of open wheelers, so you can sort of get your angle right and turn it until it fits. Um, what I wanted to do is I had a look at mounting them in different spots. Uh, it has to be mounted above the uh, number plate light, which I <coughs> found out on my, after my first attempt. Um, you can sort of mount it here, but it kind of pokes out and looks a little uh, hash farther. I don't know. I really like the idea of high mounting it like an F1 car up here. So, in collaboration with Lux Performance, we have come up with this design, which is pretty cool. So what this does is fits up here, contours to the back of the car, and that holds the rain light up nice and high, sort of, as I said, F1 style, if that makes sense. Um, and looks pretty cool. And then it's obviously got the cap on the outside of that to neaten it all up. Um, yeah, it's cool. So what I'll do is I'll show you how to install this, um, how we put it all together, how to wire it up. And um, yeah, let's get to it. Alrighty, so this is the kit we're gonna put together. Um, it'll be our FIA approved rain light. These are the resistors that we have to wire into the positive side. I'll show you that in a minute. We've got our screws that will mount the housing uh, to the car and also mount the light to the housing. <clears throat> we've got a main part of our housing. We've got the cap that fits on the outside there to make it a bit neater. And we've got a little plug here, which just fills in the gap here. So we can get the rain light in and then that just fills in the gap so we don't have a whopping big gap in the back. Okay, so with 3D printed parts, these are, these are printed by myself on my little home machine that I built. Um, it's not bad, it looks okay. It does have print lines. It can be just a little bit out tolerance wise. I try to get it as accurate as possible. Bear in mind, I'm selling these pretty cheap. And um, yeah, this isn't a $10,000 industrial machine. I'm doing this all myself in my office at work while I'm working, so uh, bear with me. I try to make them as nice as possible. Just bear in mind when you buy this, you're not gonna get a super amazing uh, molded product like you'd buy sort of from a big name thing. This is just uh, myself and Lux working together to try and get a solution for you guys. Anyway, I'll show you the next step on how to put this all together. Okay, so the first thing you wanna do is we wanna mark where we wanna mount this. So put it on and you'll feel it, it actually curves to the boot really well. You don't want it up too high, it won't sit properly. You don't want it too low because it's too close to there and you'll get a gap under here. You'll feel it sits about there perfectly in the middle and you wanna make sure it's lined up with your boot lock so it's uh, perfectly central. And then just grab yourself a drill. I've just got a two mil bit in here. You don't wanna put a big bit through these, otherwise the holes will be too big and you won't be able to screw it to them. So, just put it in here and we just wanna mark the boot lid. There we go. So now we've got our holes marked and that's where we're gonna be uh, drilling through. Okay, next up, you wanna use a five millimeter drill bit to drill through here. Um, just check around the back, make sure there's no cables or anything. I know this is clear on my car. And with those pilot holes we started, we want to drill a hole through our boot. Yes, that was terrifying. Now it wouldn't hurt to have a bit of touch-up paint or something on these so they don't rust. Um, I'm going to do a bit of touch-up paint and use a bit of silicon too just to uh, clean it all up and make it waterproof. Okay, the next thing we need is because we're going to have our rain light sitting here, we need somewhere for our cables to go. So once again, uh, it doesn't overly matter where this hole goes, but we want it somewhere in the middle. So we're just going to do a third hole in the middle for our cables to go. 
okay, to wire this puppy in, we're going to need obviously a 12 volt power source. Now, um, I'm going to wire mine into the stock fog lights uh, cable. So there's just a positive and negative going there. And that goes from the stock fog light switch, which I've still got in, installed, which I think is a really good way to do it. I think the cams regs state you have to have an on off switch. Um, you could probably just wire it into the number plate lights, which is right there. And that's really easy to do. Um, so when you turn your lights on, the light comes on. I imagine you're only going to use your lights in the rain anyway. Kind of makes sense to me, but I figured um, we may as well run it off this light anyway. So uh, yeah, I just basically ran the cables. Um, I just cut the connector off the back of the light, um, ran a cable up. You can see I use a, um, uh, I used a bit of welding rod, but you can use a coat hanger or something like that. Just get it up the channel, tape the wire on, run the wire through. You only need one wire. You just need a 12 volt uh, power because you can run obviously the earth up on the boot. So you don't have to run another wire. Um, yeah, just run it all up through the grommets, make it all neat, cable tie it all off. And then, um, yeah, I just soldered and heat shrinked onto the stock connector. So I've got a connector there so I can disconnect it, which works really well. Um, and then we've got a cable up the top. And then we now we'll have to wire up the, uh, the fog light itself. Okay, so as you can see, we've got our wire. It goes all the way along, up to the channel, along here. And then that's our 12 volt power source that comes from our fog light. Um, the cable will be coming through here for the, for the fog light. So that's, sorry, for the rain light, so that's easy. Um, so next what we need to do is secure our fog light in the housing. So let's get to that. Okay, so first thing we want to do is put our light in our housing. So once again, big end up like this and we just slide it in housing like that. And then we want to put our cap on. So with our cap, you can see there's only one hole in the cap. So we're going to put that on the top end. Okay, so you just slide that on and line that up. Now the reason it doesn't have two holes is, as I mentioned earlier, these are 3D printed on a sort of a very basic machine. So sometimes things don't line up. So what this allows us to do is line everything up properly as we screw it in. We just grab ourselves a Phillips head screwdriver. There we go. And then we've got our silver screws and self tappers. So what I do, so just pull the cap off again. So you want to go through this top one and line up the hole. So just give that a little, little wind through. And you can see the uh, self tapper poking itself out there. And then we just slide that on and make sure that the self tapper is lined up with the hole. push that on and then we just wind that in. Just bear in mind this is all plastic so don't go crank on it like a gorilla, it won't help anything. So before we crank all that up, we just want to make sure that that is lined up. You can twist the housing, make sure it's lined up about as best as it can. Now and again it's a little bit, a little bit of a lip on the bottom or something, but as long as the top looks good that's the, the main thing. We can sand these down and we can paint them as well so don't stress too much. Now get our other screw, Pop them in the bottom, and this will self-tap into the plastic on the cap, like so. So I'm just going to pull that over a bit to line it up a bit, and then just basically warp that screw in. So it's trying to push out there. Once it starts tapping into the plastic, it'll pull it all together. There we go. And I'll pull that all nice and tight. As I said, don't crank it too much. It is just plastic. Same with the top one. Give that a bit of a tweak. And then that's all together there. As I mentioned, if you do want to, you can sand this housing down a bit. Um, I might do an episode on colour coding all this. It's very easy to, to paint all this stuff if you want to. What you do is you just sand it down. You use a plastic primer filler, so you just spray it. And uh, as you sand it down, it'll fill in all the little gaps. I've, I've done some 3D printed parts that have looked amazing in the past, so it's pretty cool. Uh, and then we've just got our little cap. So that just fits in. It'll just wedge in that little notch, give it a push in. And then when you screw that all in, that'll stop it moving. Great. Last thing we need to do is get rid of this connector. We're not going to be using that anymore. So we'll get some cutters and we'll cut that off. And we'll just cut that off the end, like so. Okay, so this next part, we're going to mount this on the outside. 
And then we're gonna screw our gold self-tapping screws into those holes there from the inside. So we need to line it up, feed in our cables for power. Let's just put in some middle holes. Now, as I mentioned earlier, I would like to use silicon on these just to seal it all up, but I don't have any at the moment. So for the purpose of this video, I'm just gonna get it all in there. And then we push that through, just line it up with the hole. Get our Phillips head screwdriver. And start it off. Once you've got that started, grab your other screw. And just make sure it's lined up with the hole. There we go. And we screw them all the way in. And there is our rain light mounted. It's pretty cool, all F1 style and high. I like it anyway. If you don't like it, you don't have to use it. It's the beauty of these things. I think that looks pretty sick. Can't wait to see it all fired up. Okay, so for the next bit of the install, what we need to do is run these resistors parallel from the red cable, which is our positive, okay? So what we'll do is we'll strip that down and we'll solder, disconnect these. So we'll solder them in line parallel like that and then connect it up to our 12 volts. So it's gonna go like that. So use a bit of solder and make sure you've got some heat shrink handy too. Remember to put your heat shrink on the top first and we'll heat shrink over the whole lot. Cool, so that's our positive all done. We've got our, um, our resistors in there. That's all up, so we'll just uh, cable tie all that up nice and neat once that's done. Last thing we need to do is get that to an earth. There's a lot of little places we can do earths here. I mean, we could do it on the screw holes we just made uh, down there. Um, I'm gonna do it on this screw here. So I'm just gonna extend the wire a little bit. Just got a bit of extra wire, so I'm gonna extend that over, put that on there, and hopefully that should be it. Ah, uh, you guys will have a laugh at this. So here's me trying to figure out why the hell this light wouldn't work. So when I tested this, this is the, the power cable that goes to our fog light, and you've got a green wire and a black wire. So I tested both the ports, and the green wire is the 12 volt. I'm like, okay, sweet. So then we've got our plug over this side, and I went, sweet, so we need the green wire. But uh, when you line them up, like so, I'll try and line up one hand. Anyway, the green wire and the black wire actually swap sides. That's awesome. Thanks, Yande. Good job. So now I'm uh, changing that over. So our black wire is our positive on this side and we'll just switch that over and then hopefully it'll boot up. Okie dokie, so we fixed up our connection. So we've got all our, got to trim all my cable ties, you know, got to make it all neat and cable tie that up, but we'll just have a look at the light. I'll shut the boot down. So now if I turn my, let's turn my ignition on. And we'll turn the headlights on and then we've got, I've moved my fog light switch down here and we should have a nice bright LED rain light. How cool is that? Perfect. I reckon that looks pretty sick there. Or Formula One style, because you know like the XL is pretty much like a Formula One car in performance. You get it. Okay, and there we go. That's the installation of our FIA approved uh, CAMS rain light. So uh, Lux and I are working together on uh, designing this and we're gonna sell this as a package. So you'll get the, the housing, you know, the cap, the filler, um, the light, the screws, the resistors and everything you need to install this. And then you've got your little video here to show you how to do it. Um, they should be up hopefully on the Lux website soon. Um, I've just got to make them and get them over there. Um, but yeah, big thanks to Lux for supporting us and supplying us with the light and 
hopefully this solves a few problems for the uh, fellow XL racers. Uh, I know a lot of you are doing different setups, but I think that's a pretty neat one. Plus it's kind of high, it's out the way, easy to see. And if you get whacked up the back of the car, hopefully it won't hit your own light as well. So uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Um, I'll put a link to where you can buy these uh, in the description below once they're up. Um, but for now, yeah, thanks for watching and I'll see you soon with the next video.